Okay, pilots. I've got a couple more push rods here to do. I've got a little piece glued on my elevator back there, the little balancer. I got it glued on the bottom, but not on the top yet. I'll show you how I've done that. I got to put some rods on the rudders. Alright. Now these rods has pretty much been preset. Pilots. I mean, I'm just snapping them on. Figured out which rod. You got to check this and check that and figure out which rod goes where. But if you'll be just, just kind of stick that rod into the last hole on the arm for their staff. Line it up with your ball joint. If the ball joint's on this side, you put the rod in coming this way so that there'll be a nice, smooth transaction there. Now see, look at that. That thing's almost perfect. I mean, just the end there is just a little bit. But this is perfect, but I want it to be when that flap finishes going on up. I want it to be a little bit lower, so we got to go in just a little bit on this one. This is the first time I've even had to turn one all the way around. Maybe another half turn. Look, wrong way. Wrong way. Oh yeah. Just putting this, easing the pressure on till it snaps on. And this one's gonna have to come from the bottom here. And I want you to put these little clips here on now instead of a clevis or a Z bend. Noticed that the flap on the other side, you had to get down in here with the servo centered or to the zero position. You had to get your rod and kind of push in on your foam wire a little bit because if you had, if you put it down from the other side, it would put your flap and a bind there lining up with the ball joint so you got to come from that side and let's see if this one's got to be snapped from the bottom yep so you go ahead let's go ahead and put that on there and let's hope that we don't have to do too much adjustment oh Want to go in some? I don't have to come out just a half turn. I think it was just going to come in probably full turn. Full turn. <clears throat> yep, I'm liking that. Got them two rods on. Now. I've got to flip it over, pilots, because I took this center cockpit section off, front nose off, and had to really get some deep thought into the control box on the LEDs and come up with a solution. All right, I, I was, I've been working on it and finding out which port does what, why it's not burning one light and leak not burning the other light on the other side. Not strobing in a strobing port, but strobing in a, another port that's not supposed to be strobing. Figuring all that out, going all over everything. I mean, I, I've been working on this thing one o'clock, one thirty in the morning. I was listening to Kenny's show and, and working on this. I know you probably didn't see me commenting too much because that's what I was doing. I was in deep thought with this thing. Deep thought. 
So one port that was supposed to be a strobing port was a solid port, but it would not burn with one light. I plug it in, it would burn the red light, but the green light wouldn't work, or, or the red light, but the green light wouldn't work. If I swapped it around, okay, and just plugged one light into it, the green light would burn if I plugged the green light in. The red light would burn if I plugged the red light in. But if I wired those two together and plugged it in, only one light would burn. So I said, okay. And my wingtip port was supposed to be solid and it strobes. So I said, okay. I wired my tails into the strobing port that was strobing. And instead of wiring my two wingtip lights, I went individually into one port and into the other port where if it's just burning one light, then I'm gonna plug one light into it. And it got my outside wingtip lights to burn solid and I got my rudders uh, strobing for the love of RC. Okay. <laughs> Let's get our screws started again for the third time. And I have to take this thing apart again to put my bomb drop mechanism in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and get it together. That's probably gonna be about, maybe, I've got to wait next week to order it and be a week, you know, to get it, or four or five days, whatever. Let me get that one started. This thing kind of it kind of flexes with you, so you want to get these two right here in the center started, not tight, but just started so it'll support the whole cockpit, and then you get your other ones going. Get your other ones going. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna really snug this down, but I am gonna. You know, I, I'm going. I want to text, taxi test this thing. I don't want to get the batteries going. I got the Lord have mercy pilots. I think I'm going to have to cut a hole in my canopy top so that the wires for the gyro won't be in a bind with the canopy going down. Okay, now let me set this where it's set down back there. You got two skid skid plates back on the tails of it. Make sure it ain't gonna go off the edge here. Okay. I'm giving it some up pressure here, some up pressure. Get that screw hole lined up. Okay. Now we're just putting a little bit on it, not really any kind of really any kind of pressure, just enough to hold it there. All I'm gonna do is run it up and down the road like my usual tax test. And then it's gonna come in here and wait on the bomb drop systems to get here. And I had some comments about it, my build videos, and talking about how the the props are out out outboard you know well i didn't know that until i, I put it on there you you don't know i mean heck it, it could have been in more just as well as it been outboard but we found out i've had a couple comments on the admiral receivers here some pilots don't like these admiral receivers but i i i had one in, i've got one in my trojan and i've flown my trojan a lot and it's it's, it's sitting right there now it's had some landing gear put in, but uh, you know, it's come home. All right, so that's pretty much gonna have to be mounted right there.
find my landing gear pulled up here. I thought I know I had it stuck through here somewhere. Plug it up and see. That's all we can do. Before we start to see what fit right down in that slot. Goodness gracious, that'd be good. That'd be good. Pilots, we was talking about the battery situation last night on Kenny's show. And I've got right here, this is the Admiral Pro 5000 4 cell 60C. Okay. But it's give, still giving me a, a tail heavy CG. So I'm going to have to add weight on the nose for this one. But I hadn't checked the CG with my two 2500s. No way. But I know that I'm, I'm, I'm still tail heavy with that battery all the way forward, just like that. You can't put that down that way. That's the landing gear hole. Okay. Got radio on. Bottles down. Neutral system. Need to get out of the way here. I know I got my. Auto kill on, but I don't want to take no chances with no twin engine. I've, I've, I've had a couple of multi engine planes take off on me. <laughs> Inside the house. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Here we go, pilots. Get in there, plug. So I got a couple more rods put on the rudder. That, that servo wasn't sounding good. This one was. This servo here, I'm going to do adjustments on that one. On that aileron. I'm going to have to reverse the aileron. is clearing everything. Servo rod is clear. I 
a, a squeak in a hinge. Goodness gracious, I've got a squeak in a hinge. Let's see if my rudder's going in the right direction anyway. All right, that would be pushing. So, yep, that'd be going that way. That'd be pulling and that'd be pulling that way. Okay, what's my wheel doing? Oh, my wheel's in the correct direction also. Okay. 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 Let me see if my flaps is going to work right. <clears throat> I get these split flaps on both sides of the wing here. Just a hinge popping, needed to be moved. Alright. Alright, so they, they don't look easy. Let's see if I got this way. The, the little vents there for the radiator, look at it, it's got holes all the way through it. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. Yeah, got my strobes on there. Got my solids over here. Get by this one in here. Try not to knock it over the floor. There ain't much room here. Alright. Did I leave my radio laying over? Sure did. Left my radio laying over here. <laughs> I need that. Now this uh, uh all right now the stability's on there. I, I I don't understand it, but pilots I've got when I turn the gyro off I've got still got stability. So that might have something. And I've got to change direction on that one. But that one's right. And I can't tell until I'm getting my rods down there. Okay. Okay. Change the direction on the elevator. <clears throat> but I've got to figure out how to get that on in there without hitting the canopy. So let's check our landing gear. We got to recycle it, I think, because I had, like I said, the front nose off, and that might be what. Lord, how mercy! I hope I, it can't be the controls to the landing gear. It's got to be for some reason I put that got to be some reason I put that line harness on the landing gear. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this part or not. Let's see. Let me put it up here on my stand because I can't hold the camera. Operate the landing gear. my guns in too. Let's see if our landing gear is still working right. It was working perfect. Get my hand out of the way, make sure I don't hit that door. Like a glove! Now see that box controls that landing gear just perfect. It controls the elevator. Well, not the elevator, the elevator's got its own. It goes straight in the receiver. But it controls the rudder, and the rudders are working just fine. The wheel is working just fine. So 
I don't know why I had that Y harness hook up on that landing gear. Maybe I was going to put uh, something into it. Maybe I don't know. Oh, I forgot to look at the landing light see if it went off. Goodness gracious. Still got my strobings in the back, still got my wing tip solid. And the lights come on. Okay, pilots. I got all these extensions here because I thought I was gonna have to kind of move the receiver somewhere way off or way in or way out. <laughs> you know how that goes. <clears throat> clear flying objects Make sure you get the green one. It's got some green on the back of it. It's got gray on the back of one. So make sure you put the one on the top. That's all I'm gonna go on top. All right. All right. Get behind this thing. Twin engine P38. Let's hope my tile will take off. Oh my God, pilots. I can't hardly hold it. Just with bumping it. Yep. 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 We better hold off right there. I think this plane here is going to have plenty of power, pilots. I, would, I don't understand why you'd want to even put a upgrade on something but some of them speedsters say they got to have the speed it's time for speed i need the speed so you know it's all what you want all right now let's let's unplug let me show you a cockpit let's see i know this one's gonna work because this is an fms light <laughs> Let's just make sure our polarity is correct. Well, we've got a strobing light on our canopy there. Now running leads, Bob, I've had to put that wire harness that we was talking about on Kenny's show last night to get this single battery. But goodness gracious, Pops, I've got to run these leads somewhere. Now I can put a lot of this down in that hole. I won't put that in there. I don't understand why in the world I had that in there for. It might have been, I, I might have just been trying to extend it and I didn't want to, I didn't have the extension out or something, maybe, I don't know. But last night, Pops, you know, uh, 1.30 in the morning, you're kind of ready to get to bed. So let's see if I can wind that up like so. I'm just going to be sticking this up here. Now, I know I've got to figure out something. Can't step it down in that hole. Because that's the landing gear right there. It gives you a little bit of room there. The canopy's at least cut out a little bit in the front, but it, it's just pretty much pretty close right here. And let's stick this one up here. And that lines up right with the pilot, imagine that. I mean lines up dead with the pilot. Okay. Now I can't I can't go back. Probably gonna have enough room there. So my hole is actually gonna be cut. Now I'm gonna have to do it, pilots. Ain't no doubt. Right up in here, right in front of the pilot, it's gonna be a hole cut out right there, and you're gonna be able to see the receiver right through a hole right there, with leads coming out in front of his belly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 
that means I've got to get this box up here. Yep, it'll move. Thank goodness. Get a few more leads. You, you just got to maneuver leads, pilots, to get it to do what you want it to do. But I'm not going to sit here and do all that. I'm just going to make this video here and then and showing you what all I've had to go through. Just like maybe, you know, you might have to if you get one of these. But that box has been a bear. I might have to put some extensions on that one. Yep. I want to put some extensions up the box. The lead for the box is, is four inches long, pilots, for crying out loud. It's four inches long. So that's what I'm going to do with the receiver. I'm going to bring it up here, cut that hole out in front of the pilot, and put my receiver there. At least the receiver's green light will light up the canopy green. How about that now? There you go. There you go. So I'm going to disconnect. Got everything centered, everything centered. I've got to reverse direction on the correction of the rut, the uh, elevator. Alright. So now, do this back piece right quick. I'm going to glue in a little piece here on a little balancer. Note the, the color green here on the top of it, of the base, and the rest of it's silver. So you want to make sure you're putting that on the top. show you this because this is how I glue things. Put the rods here for the rudder. My light's not going to make it. I'm going to put here just a little bit of what I've got left in this one anyway. some more in there. I gotta put my machine guns in. This is five minutes here, five minutes. Go ahead and mix it up and let it, let it be hard while I'm poking holes. Poking, poking, stirring and a poking. nuts with the holes. Not really going deep, three or four millimeters at the most, you know. In some places you wanna be even more less than that when it's thin on the other side. You don't wanna come through a lot of, like I said now this this one or two of them holes could be even joining up with the other side where I've poked holes in it holes in it. But I'm, I doubt it. Forcing that down in them holes there, taking that tip, just kind of forcing it down in them holes. I sanded the back side of that base there a little bit on the piece with some 80 grit sandpaper, just kind of scuffed it up there and let me get that piece here off of the plane. Look at there, my hand's all in it. But it had a groove back here in the back Got some paint, got some daggum glue on it anyway, didn't I? Sure did. Sure did. Hold on just a second, lad. Well, that ain't going, that ain't going hard enough. But I am going to get that off with a little Windex. A little Windex. I've, I'm out of alcohol wipes. But a little Windex, even watered down just a little bit. See if I can get that pox off there. 
epoxy. If you get epoxy on it, it gives it a shine, and this has got a satin finish, flat finish. So we got this lined up now. And I want to open it up here. I don't want no big pile up here at my hand, see? Because that'll impede the movement. Just make sure you ain't got no big bubble coming out right there. Let's see how far off these rods were. Yeah, that really helped. <laughs> All right, now the ball joint's on the top, so I'm gonna come from the top using my last hole. And that's got to come out just a little bit. So I'm gonna take that back off. I don't wanna to put too much stress on that servo if it'll come back out without moving the servo. And that'd go a pretty good way, so I'm gonna turn it three times. Oops. Well, let's see here what we center. Let's see. I think it's going to go out some more. You know, you, you look down the center, but what I'm looking at is these imprints here on the, on the sides. You, you line up them side imprints, the body mold. Okay. Now watch way. Oh, that gun it. I didn't. I didn't look at that. Talk gun it. Let me get a pair of needle nose. That one's gonna be tough to get in there and get that one. Live and learn, I tell you, you live and learn. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Okay. When you're adjusting out, it, the, the push rod to kind of get the ball joint clevis or get loose enough to where, yep. See, this is what I was talking about right here where this body line comes up right here. And that's lining up good. That's lining up good. You hold in there a little bit more. Okay, got them snapped. I don't know if I was about them things. I hadn't heard of anybody on the bit on YouTube having problems with them coming loose. I just don't know. All right.
my machine gun. Pilots, the machine guns on this plane. It, I mean, if you can see them there, it kind of looks like they're even on that picture, but they kind of got the two on the tops kind of a little bit longer. One's a little bit longer than the other one. Okay. Now, I have ordered a couple, actually, a couple of these extra machine gun. Kits or I mean uh, sets. So I took the long, the real, real long one. I swapped it with one of my medium lengths. See, these are the short ones here. Okay. And then you had the these are like the medium lengths. And then you had a longer one. So I took one of my medium lengths and matched it up. So my two guns on the top is gonna be the same length sticking out instead of being that odd looking uneven look and all I'm really wanting to do pilots is just put just a dab on the end of that little primer and put it inside it make sure it's lining up you really don't need a big old wad of the glue inside there holding it together on the end of it there. Just give it a twist. Or you can feel it hit that base when it, it, it it's, it's lined up. You know, I, I, if, if you don't have the, another set of guns and you was wanting to do something like that, you know, it, you could cut the end of the, one of the guns off and, and shorten it, but you're just not going to have this little pin to line it up, so you're going to sit there and hold it in place until it's, you know, dries. But I just kind of like that same length look, Pilot's Butter. Now we've got our short ones here, and like I said, I was watching a documentary there on it, and... This middle gun right here is actually a 20 millimeter cannon on the one that they was flying and demonstrating. I'll give it a twist. But man, that was a pretty bird, that first prototype of this plane. Man, it was just like a mirror. It was aluminum buffed, uh, polished a hundred times, made it look like a freaking mirror. All right, and just enough to get on there. that one a twist so I'm gonna pull that one back out a little bit well maybe it didn't go in there I just ain't wanting to twist there it went ah yeah there we go now I'm hitting something ah, yeah. yep now it's lining up this one just my opinion Paul it's just my opinion I think it looks better with that gun being the same length. But I'm gonna have to work on my cockpit to get that receiver in, lined up. We've got lights. We've got landing gear. Now I've got to glue these little covers on, but again, pilots, I got to put my bomb system in there before I do that. Gotta take this, this back out again right here. 
and why those two drop systems into a harness and then bring it up here into my seventh channel that is the bind plug and then program my seventh channel to whatever switch I was going to use to use as a bomb drop. But there it is, pilots. I mean, you know, took a little bit on this one now. I'm going to have to admit it took a little bit on this one. But she's going to be a baby doll. I'm out.